we've had the Witcher, and now we've got the Woke Chat. No, just kidding, this is great, this is great. Now, you know I love you, welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. Show me some love, as, as always, I'm your host Definition, aka Frank the Tank Miller, and throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down the ending of Cursed. Obviously, there's going to be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the series yet and don't want anything ruined, then I recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you drop a thumbs up if you don't want me to curse you, and subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into our breakdown of Cursed. Okay, so Cursed is based on the book of the same name by Thomas Wheeler and Frank Miller, who even makes a cameo at one point in episode 3. Now the story was only released in October last year, and it's been a lightning fast turnaround on the series. You can tell Netflix are confident due to their casting of Katherine Langford in the role, and she really makes it her own. Langford of course gained fame with 13 Reasons Why, and this new vehicle for her is a brilliant watch. She plays Nemwe, a fey witch, that is revealed to be the daughter of Merlin. The storyline as a whole is a sort of remix of the tales of old, and it sees Nemwe teaming up with Arthur himself as they try and escort Excalibur to her dad. Merlin has lost his magic and is no longer as powerful as he used to be, and the show takes on many diversions from the legends that we've come to see play out time and time again. In this, Excalibur is sort of its own entity, and I got a lot of flashes of the Lord of the Rings with it pretty much being an extremely powerful weapon that had the ability to corrupt or empower depending on who wielded it. It's elements like this that stop it from just being a MacGuffin, and at least it gains a bit of purpose, cause hey, who doesn't love seeing people getting cut in half? Now the show is a pretty long journey, but the true Excalibur was the friends we made along the way. Now what? Now there's some fun little subplots, such as Nemwe disguising herself as a nun, and meeting Morgana, the Enchantress in Arthurian legend. She also just happens to be Arthur's sister, and yeah, it's nice how they kind of tie all of the family trees together. Merlin travels to a giant cave to see Lord Rugen. He does a horse warp like Red Dead Redemption. One of, one of the girls from the ring travels around the land trying to kill Nemwe, and she and Arthur discover a fey resistance group. Those are some of the cool little subplots that really flesh out the characters, but of course every show needs a villain, and in Cursed it comes in the form of the Weeping Monk and the Red Paladins. The Weeping Monk kinda, kinda, kinda looks like what you would draw on your face as a teenager and think was, was cool, and alongside Father Cardin, he and the monks lead the Red Paladins through the countryside, hunting down witches. Nemwe is of course one of these, and within the first 45 minutes of the show, they've burned a home to the ground, crucified some of her people, and killed her mother. Yikes. Now, I might be reaching here, but I kinda took them as being similar to the bad guys from World War II, you know, the ones that I can't say because of monetization on YouTube, who were hunting for Jewish people, and there's a lot of similarities. They, they have a cross-like symbol in a circle as their icon, which of course being alongside the colour red is very, very prominent. Again, I don't know if that's me just jumping to conclusions, but I saw a lot of similarities, and I think that the creative team were trying to show the audience that, hey, we're all alike, even if there are certain figureheads that say we aren't. On the other side of the coin, providing hurdles for Merlin is King Uther and the Queen Mother. Uther is actually not the true heir to the throne, and he was merely planted there by the mother after she gave birth to a stillborn child. She murdered Uther's real mother and covered up the crime, but Merlin is aware of what's gone on, and this of course leaves a position for Arthur to take up the throne later down the line. This doesn't happen in the season, but you can kind of see how they're laying the groundwork here, and yet setting up things in motion. Now as with most remixes, the show changes up a lot of the familiar faces in interesting and exciting new ways. Nemwe comes face to face with her father at the halfway point of the season, and a wealth of things are revealed. It's here that she learns of her lineage, and that Excalibur was actually pulled from Merlin himself, which is what ended up costing him his magic. He fell in love with Lenore, her mother, but she was promised to another, and eventually ended up driving him away because of the sword. It turns out that Merlin actually ransacked Rome and slaughtered the people there, which eventually led to the creation of the vengeful Red Paladins, and thus he's been trying to keep away from the sword in order to stop the temptation it brings. Merlin and Nimue end up becoming divided, and the ending of the season heads to all out war with the Red Paladins fighting the Fae whilst Merlin journeys to the Kings. Nemwe becomes the Fae Queen, aka the Slay Queen, 
but her days are soon numbered when she's marked for death. This kind of plays into the ending and we're told that nothing can stop it from happening. Merlin wishes to destroy the sword, but he realizes that his daughter's fate is now tied to it and makes a deal with the forces of Cumber, a Viking king, to hand it over in exchange for her. The Green Knight also goes head to head with the Weeping Monk. The Monk gets the upper hand and takes him captive, but during the face off, he discovers that the Monk is actually a Fae. The Green Knight could reveal his secret, but he doesn't due to the mantra of the Fae, which is that they are all equals. This definitely has a huge sway on the Monk, who's later revealed to be Lancelot, and arguably comes as one of the biggest twists in the entire season. He slowly starts to realize that his place isn't with the Red Paladins, and arguably goes on the biggest arc in the entire season, slowly changing from villain to hero. In addition to this, we discover that the young character he's with called Squirrel, who tries to rescue the knight, is really Percival, and that the Red Spear is headed up by Guinevere. If you're not familiar with Arthurian legend, then these are all kind of connected to Arthur as either members of the Knights of the Round Table or his wife respectively. Yes, Arthur, he does hook up with the Red Spear, but then Lancelot, he does a little August Alina. Now, in the final two episodes, Uther poisons the Queen Mother as a way to get revenge for the mother that she murdered, but in doing so, he also proves in some way that he's a perfect heir to her. It's a really chilling scene that shows he actually did become her true son, because only her true son would ever murder their own mother, and it really hammers home the entire quest for power that I think is the big theme in this show. Everyone seems to be willing to take power, even at the cost of their own souls, and we slowly watch as the quest for the throne and the sword corrupts all. Nemwe is given the option to either hand herself over to Kumba or Uther, and even her own people start to distrust her. Morgana also makes a deal with the ghost of her dead lover in order to pass the sword to death, and add to that, little Iris is coming for Nemwe, and you really start to second guess what her fate will be. Now, upon discovering that Merlin knows of the truth about Uther's past, he locks up the wizard, and Nimue's people are seemingly saved. She hands herself over to Uther, but doesn't take the sword with her, and the Fae are attacked on the shore by Cumber's forces as they try and make their escape. This leads to a huge battle, and it definitely feels like a high point in the series. The Weeping Monk has a change of heart, rescues Squirrel, and fights for his life against his own kind. Elsewhere, Nimue finds the body of the Green Knight and is then captured by Father Carden. This is when death arrives and she's actually revealed to be Morgana. Now, it's a bit difficult to tell what exactly went on due to the scene becoming animated for some reason, but it turns out Morgana killed death and thus someone needed to take death's place, so she was forced into the position. Death passes Excalibur to Nimue, who then uses it to behead Carden, and thus they're finally free of him. Now, due to her abilities, Morgana can sense that Merlin is at death's door, and she goes to him along with Nimue. They escape from the paladin camp, but it's at this moment that Iris finally gets a wish, and she shows up to kill Nimue, firing an arrow into her that makes her tumble off a waterfall. And you know what, yeah, as much as I didn't like Iris initially, I was kind of pleased to see her get this little moment, you know. No shade to Nimue, but yeah, you go Iris. It's at this point that Merlin picks up the sword, and thus regains his power, and Iris flees as the paladins arrive to attack him. However, due to his ability, he easily takes them out, and basically becomes Thor at the end of Thor Ragnarok. What happens to Iris will shock you, and Merlin grapples with the power that has returned to him. He grabs Morgana, and the two teleport away, which is the last time that we see them in the season. Iris is taken into a church, and she's given a mask, likely going forward as a big villain for the second season. It's going to be kind of interesting to see the arc that she goes on, and I actually think that she might also do what the Weeping Monk did, and end up turning against her people. She was a very lost soul that clearly just wanted a home, no matter the cost, and I think that, yeah, she's going to be a very interesting character going forward. Now, Nimue seemingly dies, however, mixed in with the ascension of Iris, we actually get a scene in which we can see her in a lake. You might remember that this was shown at the opening of the season to tease what was coming ahead, and though it seems like the character drowns, there's actually a lot that we can take from this. Now firstly, we need to look into Arthurian legend itself and see who Nimue really was. Now Nimue has taken up many, many names and monikers, but the one that you may know her best for is the Lady of the Lake. According to the legend, she gave Excalibur to Arthur and took it back upon his death, 
reaching up into the air as the sword was cast back into the body of water. She also helped to raise Lancelot after the death of his father, and though I don't think that this will be completely carried over, I do think that the seasons going forward will play with it in some way. Lancelot has of course just lost Father Carden, his surrogate dad, and I do think that she will help to guide him through embracing his fey abilities. The fact that Nimue also dropped into water does make it seem like she will be gaining new powers and an ability to be at one with it, thus giving her the title of the Lady of the Lake. I don't believe that she's dead, as Morgana had of course gained new abilities, and she would be able to sense whether Nimue was about to pass or not. As she didn't, she's likely still alive and kicking, and though you may think that the other premonitions uttered by the preceding death character did warn of this coming in, I believe that Morgana stopped this when she saved her life. So yeah, I can't see them killing off the main character before the second season, but hey, Game of Thrones did it, so why not? Now, before we get into the review, I just want to let you know we're giving away a free copy of the MCU Infinity Saga box set to one random subscriber. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video and leave your thoughts on the series in the comments section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of August and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. Okay, so what did I think of Cursed? Well, though I've seen some people complaining about it kind of forcing diversity and making female empowerment take centre stage, I personally don't feel like it was too forced and, at least to me, Nimue is definitely a more flawed character rather than a Mary Sue who just so happens to be good at everything. I can see a lot of people disagreeing with that, but to me, she gets blindsided by a kid at the end of the show and throughout, whenever she doesn't have Excalibur, it does feel like her back's against the wall. And yeah, I found it believable for, for a, a show about witches and stuff. Now, it's also nice to see Frank Miller portraying women that aren't ladies of the night for once. And I, I did appreciate the characterizations, I, I can't lie. This has some pretty high production values and some nice plays on the original legend that keep things feeling fresh and not as derivative as they should be for something that's probably been adapted over a thousand times. I feel like there were some flaws and you know the pacing was a bit off from time to time and if I was to change anything I would have cut down a lot of the subplots and probably got this at 8 hours as I feel like that runtime would have probably covered all of the same ground but left it feeling a lot brisker. However for a new property with a first season that's trying to reinvent the wheel I did enjoy it. Overall I'm excited to see what happens next and Cursed gets an 8 out of 10. Okay, so that's our breakdown of Cursed. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, so comment below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, then please drop a thumbs up. And if you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of The Old God, which is going to be linked at the end. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat to us on our Discord, linked in the description, or at Heavy Spoilers on Twitter. Hopefully, I see you over there. But if not, have a, have a lovely weekend. It's been nice talking to you and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace. Peace. peace.